guest for today is Robert Rob Stevenson. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, uh, unless you do a really bad interview. Uh, um, that means you'll get bumped back to like third or something, but really? no pressure. Okay. Thank you for having All right. me. Alright, so Rob is a vocal coach. He was my very first vocal coach and he's also worked with some other vocalists that you may or may not have heard of. Would you like to list a few? Uh, I work with uh, Justin Timberlake and um, Rihanna and uh, Pharrell Williams and <laughs> Kelly Rowland. Hey! Just to name a few. I've got to start off with how we met and our very first lesson. In our first session, you know, um, I talked to you and your mom and your mom says, Hi, yeah, Kai won. You know, not one, but uh, was on Australia's Got Talent, and it was like, oh, that's great. Yeah, for singing, no, for dancing. I was like, oh, okay, well, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not a dance dance teacher at all. And then she was like, what? He really wants to sing. I was like, oh, okay, this is great. She said, but he's awful. He can't sing. I was like, okay, but well, can I talk to him for a minute? After having our first session, I heard the potential that was there, and um, gave you tasks to do every single day. And now you're this incredible artist, you know, you've, you've come a long way. So I'm very, very, very happy that, you know. We... So I'm afraid I got to go to your James C. Academy workshop, which was awesome. Well, thank you for coming. You performed at it and rocked it. Yeah. Thank you. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah. And so during the day, um, I noticed that you say a particular phrase quite a bit. Okay. I see. And I thought I might adopt them, adopt it as my, kind of my own catchphrase. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get so many stars like to call you up and you get to work with them? How does it work? Uh, well, first of all, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to work with the people that I do work with, the stars and up and coming stars or artists that's pursuing a career that'll make them famous one day. But um, we don't do any mass marketing or advertising, and when we do get the one call, we treat it like it's most likely going to be our last call. So we put everything that we can into the project. And if we do a good enough job to the point to where, you know, they call us back, we know that we've completed the task the first time. And even though they call, may call me back the second time, I'll think of something else to make sure that they remember me in order to bring yeah. me back the next time. And then but it's all about recommend you to yeah, rec people. yeah, recommend me to other people and it's all about quality of work. It must be pretty exciting to get a call and someone say, Hey, we'd like you to come and work with Real Williams. Yeah. Do you sometimes like get up and like do a jig or something and just scared to shut down. Well you know the funny thing is is that um, with any of my clients and I'm not trying to be politically correct, if any of them call me back you know, um, to work with them, I get really excited. I'm like, yes, it's time to go back. You know, um, uh, if I'm working for Justin, I always hear the Mission Impossible um, soundtrack because I know what that job is going to be like. You yeah. know, it's going to be awesome, full of creative arranging parts. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you know what you intricate parts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm really, <laughs> I really, I get really excited over that, and uh, you know. Um, my wife, who's my assistant, Chantel, uh, this year I got to work with one of her favorite artists and it's funny to see her respond anytime this particular artist comes around. So when they come to our home studio, I make sure that she opens the door. Yeah. I would intentionally yeah. go to the bathroom on the further side of the house and she would have no choice but to open the door and when she sees this artist, she goes, ah. <laughs> so, um what have probably been your highlights of your You know what, career? I can tell you a lot of different stories about each one of my clients. There have been tremendous highlights, and I'll just name a few. Uh, when I was working with Kelly Rowland, just how incredibly nice and, and what a hard worker she is, and you just want to see her win, you know, yeah. because of her attitude. But more importantly, she was like, hey, you know, I want to come to your house. I was like, uh, um, I'm in an apartment, and at the time I was in an apartment, small, you know, spot, two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. And um, she came to the house and cooked for me and my family. Wow. Yeah, not saying, hey, we we'll buy some groceries and we can cook. You, I want you to cook, but she actually went in there and cooked some fish tacos, and they were incredible. <laughs> and I was blown away. I was just sitting there, and I, 
you know, I mean, I get excited to work with celebrities, but when they do stuff like, like that, that yeah. it's mind-boggling. Like, it just blows you away. Yeah. And when she did that, I was like, wow, Kelly Rowland is in my kitchen, and she's cooking in my kitchen. I was just blown wow. away by that. So or um, another situation was when I first worked with, um, you know, got called to work with Dave uh, Matthews, and, and um, an hour into our session, you know, he opens the door and he pushes steam in the room. And I just stop. And I don't get gaga or googie or crazy-eyed or anything like that. But I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in the presence of two legends. Uh, what we would call music royalty. Yeah. And while I was sitting there watching them chop it up or talk, uh, Sting looks at me and he's like, hey, don't stop. I need you to continue the warm-up. So I got to perform too. And I was like, okay. And then it became an out of body experience. So everything was in slow motion. I was like, we're going to sing. Go, 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 go. And the funny thing is, is after we finished, he went to the stage. I finished with Dave. And I sat on the side of the stage. And after he finished his set, he came off the stage. And he said, hey, mate, those goos, they really work. He definitely an out of body experience. And at the same time, after that, literally almost a year later, Dave Matthews asked me to come in and coach him and get him ready for his tour. And I was blessed to be able to do that with him this year. It was absolutely incredible. Well, so, uh, so for all your other vocalists, um, what do you recommend people do? Like with how, how much practice or how, yeah, you know, what well, other it all depends. It all depends on what their goals are. You know, any artist, you've got to spend about a minimum of three hours of just doing vocal work. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're singing three hours straight, you know. Yeah. That would mean if you have a voice coach, go over the hour or however long your sessions are and just listen and make yeah. sure you're hearing instruction or receiving the instruction well enough to be able to recall it in order for muscle memory to take hold and be engaged in the area where you can actually do exactly what the coach is asking you to do. Yeah. And the only way to hear that or to, to get that is to go back and listen. Am I doing exactly what the coach is asking me to do? Um, you know, if, if he's asking for a goo or a gi, does it sound like a goo or a gi and not a go or a ga? That's totally different, you know what I mean? So in, within those realms, when you go back and listen, you know, you should hear if you're actually doing it the correct yeah. way. And if you are, after you've listened, now go back and do the whole lesson do over that. again. Because so other than vocally, what would you tell people to work on? Like you were saying before in the workshop about style, style? what well, other stuff? Well, the thing is, I mean, it, do you know who you are as an artist? That's a big yeah. thing. And one way to figure that out is to sit down and, and study your favorite artist. And then once you've studied your favorite artist, you know, when I say study them, that doesn't mean just listen to their songs, but break them down. You know, write out the lyrics. Instead of, it's easy to go on the internet and print out the lyrics and just read what they're saying. But when you listen and have to handwrite what you think you hear, you start hearing the nuances in the voice. You get to hear yeah. all the dynamics and what they're doing as far as st storytelling. And uh, do that with your artists. Um, so, um, you were also, before you were a, vocal, a lot of backing vocalist stuff as well. I do. So, for other backing vocalists and stuff, um, and stuff. Um, is there usually open auditions or do you just know who you know? What is it like? Well, a lot of it is who stuff? you know. You know, yeah. um, if you're, you're in with musical directors or have relationships with other singers, and a lot of times, uh, if a lot of tours are going out, and other singers that are that have those relations are booked on those gigs, now it's open season for other artists or other singers to come in and get those jobs. Yeah. So it's very much so who you know. And outside of that, um, when I got my first background singing gig, it was someone that I know that gave me a chance, and his name was Daryl Adams. He got the call to work with Justin Timberlake, and Justin Timberlake told him to find the other guy, and he, he called me Justin's voice coach on that gig, and fell in love with what she did, and didn't realize that this vocal coaching thing was starting to take place as a result of her influence on my life. And sadly, but she passed in 2006. But while she was in the hospital sick, she was still schooling me, you know, teaching me, and it wasn't until she passed and then 
Justin needed help on the road, and I was already singing and arranging vocals for the Future Sex Love Show promo tour, and um, that's when he asked me to warm him up, and that's when all of this stuff started at that point. So, um, just like to say thank you so much for your time. You got and it. just one more thing. Um, okay. The, are there any other, I know you do the stars of today, mm -hmm. but, and do you also have any upcoming artists that you think really... Mm -hmm. No. No? No one? Well, there might be a girl back in Atlanta. No, uh, no one in Australia since you're here? Australia? I haven't... Mm. No. no. 13 years old, blonde hair. 13 years old. ring a bell. Blonde hair, ring a bell. Come on, be There was a kid at the workshop the other day that just totally blew everybody away. Maybe him, but I don't know how to get in contact. Hmm? No one? No one. Well, you! <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's right! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely you. Cat. <laughs> cat <ball. laughs> hey everybody, hope you guys enjoyed that last episode of Kai and Amy TV. If you guys want to see more, our previous episode of our very first episode, just that way, there's Christmas special. My channel as well, all my music stuff is up there. Also, if you guys really enjoyed and you want to keep up to date, please feel free to subscribe. Oh, it's just down there. Ha. Anyway. You guys know what to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.